long before Ptolemy, astrologer, believed that the planets and the stars exerted a strong influence on human beings. We used to call this astral determinism. Now, the Christian scripture report that God gave free will to mankind. During the 13th century, it was the subject of much debate. The Dominican theologian Thomas Aquinas offered an answer. He said in Latin, Vir sapiens dominabitur astris. A wise man will dominate the stars. Western authors and poets also dealt with this question and put forward different points of view. Let's turn to the most important text in medieval French literature. I refer to the Romance of the Rose, Le Roman de la Rose. Like the Breviari d'Amor, it has two parts, but they are arranged in the opposite order. Here, the first part may be considered a manual of courtly love, and the second one as an encyclopedia. The first section was written by Guillaume de Loris. It relates the allegorical journey of the lover. The lover enters a dream world and falls in love with a rose that represents a young woman, hence the title of this poem. Allegorical figures teach him the secrets of love, generosity, eloquence, honesty, and so on. The second part was written by Jean de Main, a Parisian scholar. He inserts new allegorical figures that provide the lover with a new set of themes, including astrology. Nature, personified, describes the universe and is certainly concerned with the influence of the stars. Nature says that human beings never stop complaining about their fate. Men say that the fates had decreed such deaths for them and had set up such destinies from the times when they were conceived, and since they took their births under such constellations that by strict necessity, without any other possibility, they have no power to avoid such a death. But I know very well that they can, through teaching, through clean, pure nourishment, by following good company that is endowed with sense and virtues, they can, I say, obtain another result. Jean de Main develops Thomas Aquinas' suggestion and insists on individual responsibility. He confirms that the stars give men certain talents and inclination, but man, through his education and his free will, is able to resist some of these inclinations, the bad ones, and is able to become the master of his own destiny. And now it's time to move to Italy and to take another very famous example of an allegorical journey. In his Divine Comedy, Dante Alighieri treats astrology as a very important science. The three parts or canticas, hell, purgatory and paradise, all end with the same word, the stars, le stelle. Throughout this journey, Dante informs us of the position of the stars and the planets. In the very first canto of hell, he says that the journey begins at the spring equinox, that is where the sun is in the sign of Aries. But the stars and the planets also shape the rest of Dante's journey, and especially paradise. The structure reflects Ptolemy's system, supplemented with the ninth sphere. This was introduced later to account for the movement of equinoctial precession. It was explained by Godefroy de Calatay in a previous unit. Thus, we have nine skies or heaven in all, the seven planets plus the sphere of the fixed stars plus the first mover, the primum mobile. Dante regards the planets as mediating powers. They are an emanation of God and they contain the germ of life which descends from heaven and is incarnated on the earth. Dante reminds us that the influence of the stars are not necessarily negative. On the contrary, they give men certain talents by which their character are shaped. The most important planetary influence is, and how well, how else could it have been otherwise, in utero at the moment of birth. But in fact, 
In fact, everything on Earth is constantly responding to the ebb and flow of astral impulses, which God uses to regulate human affairs. The heavens are God's instruments. God uses them as the organ of the divine art. So, the heavens are equivalent to universal nature, which gives each individual thing its specific nature. In the second canto of heaven, Beatrice, Dante's lover, explained that The motion and the power of the holy wheels must be derived from the blessed movers as the work of the hammer from the smith. In other words, the movements of the heavens, the holy wheels, are set in motion by the angels, the blessed movers. This reminds us of our image of the angels turning handles. Beatrice introduces the metaphor of the smith by suggesting that this movement of the heavens forges the shape of the human earth. In the Romans of the Rose, we find a very similar idea. In this miniature, nature is represented by a smith and she is actually shaping the baby that the parents are conceiving. A very powerful image indeed. Dante also focuses on the very moment of procreation, not just the moment of the birth. And he says something very interesting. The influence of the stars is absolutely primary because it can override heredity. In fact, it is the only way to avoid children becoming simple copies of this parent, or in other words, a clone, as we will say today. Nature, once begotten, will always follow a course like that of its begetters if divine providence did not intervene, meaning through the movement of the stars. Observe that here again Thomas Aquinas might be regarded as inspirational. He affirms distinctio et multitudo rerum est adeo. The diversity and multiplicity of things is from God. The sentence, the sentence suggests that diversity and inequality should be cherished and considered as gifts from God. Actually, the very act of creation implies discrimination from the one to the multiplicity, from the same to the different. God's love shows itself through multiplicity, through inequality. Otherness is the fruit of God's love. I hope I have convinced you. Not only does the movement of the stars influence love on earth, it is also the outcome of love, God's love. This was the last video of our heavenly week. Next week we'll be back on earth to deal with magic, dreams and miracles. Mm -hmm.